All right, well, welcome everybody. My name is Joe Rand. I'm the executive director of the Broker Public Portal, uh, and I'm happy to welcome you here today. We're gonna to talk for the next hour. Uh, I have with me John Mazur, uh, the CEO of HomeSnap, as well as Guy Walcott, the founder of HomeSnap. Hello, gentlemen, nice to have you here. Great to be here. And I wanna, uh, and, and just, we, 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 we did this about an hour ago with people that uh, were uh, investors or board members in the BPP, but I just wanna, um, uh, just to set the stage for everybody that's joining us today for this session, um, you know, what is the BPP and what is, what, what, you know, how this, does this fit with HomeSnap? Um, I'm the executive director of the BPP. The BPP is a nonprofit. Uh, it's, it's, it's not technically a nonprofit, but essentially all the people I mentioned as investors, they can't make any money. They, they simply uh, gave money to help the BPP get started. Um, and the BPP is essentially a nonprofit um, that, is a collection of brokers and MLSs that was started about seven years ago uh, to create a broker public portal, a portal that uh, followed fair display guidelines, fair industry practices, positive consumer practices, things like that. But rather than build one, what they did about three years ago was form a joint venture uh, to partner with HomeSnap to position HomeSnap as the broker public portal. Uh, since HomeSnap was already in business with a great portal that already followed fair display guidelines. And so there was a JV formed, a bunch of agreements signed, binding agreements on HomeSnap that are still binding even after the acquisition from CoStar. Um, and, uh, and that's where it leads us today. And, uh, and some of the questions people have is, well, what does the CoStar acquisition announced about a month ago, um, how does that uh, affect the relationship between the BPP and uh, HomeSnap? So thank you for set, letting me to set the stage with that. Welcome, John and Guy, and congratulations, because while we were doing this a few hours ago, the deal closed, so congratulations to both of you. It's quite an achievement, uh, as anybody would, would recognize, to get something like this done. So congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Thanks very much. And for the record, I look at that prior webinar as the warm-up, and this is the actual. Yes, this webinar. is the real one. <laughs> the, um, uh, and someone did ask me, just because I used the word investors, yes, there's no, uh, the, the MLSs were investors as well as the brokers. That's who we met with uh, earlier today, the people who were uh, the founders of the BPP. And now we've got everybody here today to talk about uh, what's going on, because obviously it was big news, very exciting news, it broke less than a month ago, uh, but it did raise some concerns for people. So I just wanted to start with an open-ended kind of question. People in this industry are obviously a little nervous about these kinds of changes. Um, what do you both see as CoStar's intentions for HomeSnap? Why did they buy the company? Why did you sell to them? in particular. Tell us about that decision making. John. Um, why did CoStar buy HomeSnap? So CoStar is, first, thanks for everyone, everyone for, uh, for being here. This is awesome. I hope we do more of these. Um, so HomeSnap has been dedicated to making agents successful through its entire, uh, you know, career. And the venture with uh, the broker public portal was designed to also on the consumer side, um, provide a fares display search portal um, that, you know, didn't monetize and actually increased kind of the benefit that we accrue to agents and brokers. And um, the short answer is CoStar has bought into that vision. They love what we're doing. They, um, you know, believe in this non, you know, this non-disruptive innovation model, and they've proven it in the, the, the commercial side of their business. And they see a lot of opportunity in what we're doing, which is working with, not against the industry to build the best tools for agents, brokers, and consumers. And th that is the, the main impetus that uh, th 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 this marriage took place. The other uh, reason I believe is that there is a lot that we do in terms of our technology that I think they think could be beneficial on the commercial side. Uh, to, uh, to, to uh, their business. So I think that there's a lot of synergies there, but first and foremost is um, who we are and our mission, um, they, they bought into and they wanna make it successful. I, mean, I, I would s s summarize it as, you know, when they were looking at to try and get to get into residential, they wanted to find an approach that fit with their values and the approach that they've had in the, in the uh, commercial space, which is about uh, helping 
brokers, uh, agents, and and uh, the industry uh, do its job, do transactions, work together, um, not to disrupt them, replace them, disintermediate them, uh, become a market participant. And so when they looked at the residential space, uh, there weren't that many companies that, that fit the bill. Um, and we did. And conversely, when you ask about, well, well why did we do this, right? Um, you know, you when you have a venture-backed startup, there's really kind of two potential end goals, right? You can either sell the company to someone really big or you can go public. Um, and so for us, you know, we wanted to find a home where we could uh, live up to the mission that we've had for ourselves all along, which was to um, help agents, brokers, MLSs uh, do what they do and that would support it and help it go better, faster, stronger, bigger, and not, you know, just bust our products apart and take our people and put them, integrate them into their big, big machine that, that had a different set of priorities and goals and values than we did. And so this was the rare example of where uh, those two things came together. What we, we looked like what they wanted to do in residential and they looked like a home that would let us uh, execute our mission on a bigger scale. All right, well, let me get some questions. I, I also want to let everybody who's watching know that if you want to post a question in the Q&A, we will try to get to as many questions as we can. Uh, if we don't get to them, we are saving them and we will respond to you separately after the webinar is over, but feel free to please throw them on. Um, I have a bunch of them myself that I want to get into some of the concerns that people have. And I guess the primary concern, and you've kind of touched on it a little bit, but I want to really drill down is this concern people have in the industry, they've been burned before by technology companies that either pivoted or they changed their business model that, and they look at CoStar and they say, well, CoStar is making a big investment. We like HomeSnap the way it is. Um, are, what, is, it, is it possible that they could be changing the business model that we've come familiar with, with the, the way that HomeSnap respects the buyer agents by letting them register buyer agents, you're listing your lead on the listings, no competing advertising, things like that. Um, what do you say to people who are concerned about a shift in the business model like that? It's not going to happen. I mean, it's just not going to happen. I mean, as I've said to you, Joe, it would be dumb to buy HomeSnap to do that. Like we're the wrong company to do that. We have very strict agreements with our MLSs, uh, with with, with uh, the BPP. It just doesn't make sense. Um, I think CoStar and the CEO, Andy Florence, has gone on record publicly stating multiple times, he believes in your listing, your lead. He believes in the agent-client relationship. Um, and that is in the DNA of who HomeSnap is and has been for over a decade. Um, and, and so... <clears throat> that's not changing. We're all coming over and, um, you know, we're, we're, we're starting work today and seeing the, it, it's the continuation of our mission. What we are going to have is a lot more resources. Uh, you know, we've always been a company. We have 60 incredible engineers, but now we can have hundreds of engineers. We can do things better, faster, stronger, as Guy likes to say. So there is no concern about that. Uh, they're not interested in becoming a broker. They're not interested in, uh, you know, doing advertising models that, um, you know, take another listing and put another agent on it. It's not going to happen. I mean, I look at this as kind of, um, you, you've got the, the letter of the law and the spirit of the law and the values that back that spirit, right? And so uh, one of the beauties of the broker public portal uh, joint venture and the partnership that we created, uh, technically, Joe, it's four years ago now, um, is uh, that, that it was built specifically with this kind of, even an acquisition in mind, in that it set up a, a set of guardrails that, that said what we, um, what we could and couldn't do. So that's the letter of the law, right? So there's certain, you know, there's contracts we have that say a lot of those things, we, we just aren't allowed to do them and, and retain our uh, connection to all the MLSs, the data that comes in, uh, et cetera. But then there's also the, the, the spirit, which is, and the values that back the spirit, which is the, the things that we believe in, um, which are, as John said, about your listing, your lead, right? Your, 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 your listing has value and we value, we know it's important and uh, we're not going to sell off space on it to other people. We're not allowed to, but we also don't want to, right? Um, that your clients, uh, similarly, right, they, they should be able to, to uh, use our site or our apps and work with, work with their agent and their broker uh, you know, unmolested by by attempts to try and redirect them to somebody else. The consumers deserve something that isn't just, you know, pop-up ads and trying to, to trying to, you know, to lead gen them at every, at every step of the way. And that we're not supposed to be 
market participants. We're not supposed to be buying houses directly from consumers, setting up brokerage shops so we can charge referral fees and, and you know, a lot of the things that people are concerned about. So they aren't allowed but in, in one, on, on the one hand, but the reason they aren't is because, uh, is because they, they go against our values. And in fact, uh, Andy Florence, the CEO of CoStar, I think was due, did an interview with Inman where he said he thinks a lot of those practices are uh, immoral. Not just like we don't want to do them or we're probably not going to do them or we're not going to do them anytime soon, like immoral, which is a pretty strong repudiation of things that don't live up to those. And so that kind of tells you where he's coming from. And, uh, you know, that's where we're coming from, too. And so that's why we think this is a, an awesome opportunity where those are those are aligned. It's funny. I had a conversation with uh, Andrew Florence, um, just a short one uh, when this all started. Uh, it was actually while it was right, like right after he had talked to Brad Inman. Uh, and he talked about the same thing and, and where it comes from, this idea that this distaste for doing advertising on a listing is that I think his mother was a realtor. And the idea that somebody he, he likens it to somebody coming into the front yard and planting their own sign in the yard like that's that's just not the way it works. And I think there's two dimensions to it. And I want to make sure we highlight both of them. One of them is that your business model has worked. Your business model got you to this point and has now gotten you the backing of a big company, public company. $30 billion plus market cap company that also follows that similar model. That's what they do um, in the commercial space is they help sell marketing services to agents and brokers to end users. So now they're doing it in the residential space as well. So it, it, like to some extent, there's a question of, well, why would they want to change the model? Um, you, they're keeping you on, you built the business around this model. But then there's the other dimension, which is, and you've said it, Guy, and I think, John, you alluded to as well, is you can't do it. But just to make that explicit for everybody that they understand, that's the whole point of the BPP's involvement in here. BPP formed a joint venture with you to position you as the broker public portal. And that joint venture specifically prevents you from doing these things. And I don't want to make it seem as if, you know, for the last four years, guys, for the last four years, that BPP has been with a big stick making sure you stay within the guardrails. It has been a thing because we did the deal with you because it aligned with the way you were already doing things and the way you want to do things. And, and from the BPP side, HomeSnap has been a good partner. When I talk to the board members, when I talk to the people from the BPP side, they, they, they believe that, that, that home, they have to go look at the contracts. You guys have gone above and beyond. You follow the spirit of the agreement, not just the letter. But if that changed... If, if you were no longer acting inconsistent with the BPP mission, so would our position with you. So that's, that's what people don't realize. They've been burned before by other companies. But when, when the smart people that founded the BPP did it, they learned from those mistakes when they did the agreement with you. So you can't do that. I think that's, you don't want to, but even if you wanted to, you couldn't. I think that's an important point to make. Without a doubt. And I mean, that goes to our individual MLS relationships too. I mean, MLSs are our partners. They have been. They've been so supportive of HomeSnap, and they expect us to operate in a certain way, and um, and and we do. So, again, my, what I what, what I know, uh, the relationship with CoStar, we were in discussions with them for over a year. Now the deal's closed. I can say we've had many other companies that have looked and wanted to buy us that didn't. We felt, and we've had investors too. We would go out in the early days and. Um, you know, we knew their intention for what what they wanted to do was not what we wanted to do. Um, and you don't buy HomeSnap to uh, to go against what our entire brand is built upon. I think it's it's important to note, and I think John sort of alluded to it, but just to be really crystal clear about it, that uh, it's not just that HomeSnap is going to continue to exist uh, with with new ownership, with you know, with more resources, but that the people that created in my case and run home snap will continue to be creating more and running home snap uh, in the future based on the same set of of uh, the same mission the same values that we have before and not that's not incidental that was part of the deal right this deal would not have happened if everybody in our management team had not agreed to come over and continue to run the company um and i think that should tell you what the intention is here which is the intention is more of what you like about it basically uh right a better funded version of what we already are not something new um and and we can get into the details of what that means but but you know that that is in practice what uh, what, what is intended here and that's a good example of where you can kind of see their 
um, you know, put their money where their mouth is, right? They wouldn't, if what they cared about was, I would want the data to do this other thing, they wouldn't require us to have all of the exact people that we have come over. Uh, that wouldn't, that wouldn't make sense in that case. But we all, but we all are, and we're all looking forward because now we see like the thing we love to do, we can do more of it. You know, that's you know, things we love to do. We can now do more of them. And let me ask you about another concern. You know, first concern is this going to become like a pivot to change the business model? Question concern number two, which we've seen about, out and about in the industry, is this idea that that CoStar has the intention of trying to become a national MLS in residential real estate, and that this is a step toward doing that. How would you respond to concerns like that, John? I mean, it's just not the case. I mean, if you look at, and again, you know, if you if you look on the commercial side. Um, CoStar had to invest billions because the, the, y, y, to actually develop uh, that platform because it wasn't there. That's not the case in residential. We have this amazing network of MLSs that work well and provide you know cooperation and compensation and stewards of the data. And I, I've heard people ask me like, well, CoStar is an MLS on the commercial side. They're not. I mean, they don't provide uh, cooperation and compensation and do those things. You can list on CoStar for free, um, but they're in the business. In addition to being able to put your listings up for free, if you want to market your listings, you can do so. Uh, and, and they help sell buildings. And so there is absolutely uh, no chance of that. It's just, it's not happening. I think it's important to kind of just, just, and maybe people, I wasn't even around uh, at the beginning, you know, when CoStar was, was started, I was probably in high school, maybe. So, right. you know, it's a long time ago if I wasn't around. Um, uh, you know, their goal was to create awesome software for uh, commercial real estate brokers, right? Their version of agents. Um, and to do that, they needed to have the data about all of the buildings and spaces and deals and so forth. But there, it didn't exist, right? There wasn't a commercial MLS to go to in the late 80s or early 90s. And so what they had to do to, in order to create the software, they first had to create the data. So they had to actually hire people to uh, call every commercial broker in town to find out about what was for, for rent, what deals had closed, how much per square foot, all, you know, all the landlords, et cetera, et cetera. And so th that was a means to an end. The goal was create awesome software that helps these guys do their job. So when you fast forward to now in the residential uh, world, like that's what we do. Like one of the one of the cornerstones of our company is create awesome software for agents and brokers and MLSs to do what they do. Um, that is CoStar's mission here as well. But that data already exists. They don't. There is no benefit to them on trying to re reinvent the wheel. Uh, MLSs do an excellent job of exactly what I just described, which is, uh, uh, you know, locally. Uh, getting all of the accurate information in a timely way um, from the people that know it best uh, into a single source. Like it's a lot of work and it's already done well by MLSs. The thing we need to do is to be able to build national scale software on top of that. And that's exactly what we do. So um, there is no mismatch here because the goal was always about building awesome software and the mechanism by which the data comes in is turns out to be completely different in the real estate, in the residential space. And that's great. Not, that's not just, fine. It's, it's awesome. And I think, uh, therefore there's no need for them to be a central repository for data. We just want to, we just want to make awesome software. I mean, I get, I get why people ask about this because of CoStar's prominence within the commercial space, having been there since the eighties, building the database, building the database, and they are indispensable for a big commercial broker. I mean, when I wear my brokerage hat, I have accounts with, uh, you know, my brokerage side has accounts with CoStar and they do, uh, you know, they, they do a good job. I mean, I go to the, it's expensive. And I say, you know, are we getting value? They're like, yeah, we're getting value. It's a really valuable thing to do. And part of it is because they put all that money into building up the database that they had to do uh, because uh, it didn't exist. And I think to some extent, they, this idea that they're going to replicate that in commercial, you know, they're not even really an MLS, as you say, John, in residential. They don't do the other things that MLSs do. MLSs do more than just simply accumulate data, not simply, but they, that's a big deal, but they don't, they do a lot more. They do the cooperating broker commissions. They do advocacy. They do mediation dispute mm -hmm. resolution. They do community. You know, they, they build community, stuff like that. And, not, and CoStar doesn't do any of that. It's just, you know, the extent to which there's a national MLS. Well, I mean, the portals, basically, you can search nationally on the portals now. That's been the case for 20 years. So 
you know, I, I don't, I, I love the MLS system. I think the MLS system is great. And the thing is the MLS is all your clients, right? They're home snaps clients. Like if you, if you made a move to, to change that, they, you know, they all have agreements with you. They wouldn't have to stay in the right. So then you, you get back to the spirit versus the letter, right? The letter of the law is like, well, we can't do that anyway. All of our agreements are with MLSs. Uh, but the spirit is like, we're partners of the MLS. This is our, this is, this is what we do. We would be a terrible company to buy if you were somehow under the illusion that you could pull that off. We would not be the best place to do that. And that is not uh, the intention here. It's not necessary. It's probably not even a good idea. Um, and it's not what anybody wants to do. Right. And I think it also, I mean, let's just say, I think it shows everyone, I mean, we are, MLSs, we, we could not be home snap without our partnerships with the MLSs. And I hope it sends to the uh, market too, to other uh, technology companies, work with the MLSs, partner with them, listen to them, and, and look what happens. You can have success. And um, I think that we, a big part of the reason that we get to build such great software is because we get to build it in concert with the MLSs and we get to build it in concert with brokers. And it, so like that would be, that's not going away. And, and our goal, if you think about it, is to build, uh, build software that's at national scale, right? Yep. So the thing about MLSs that's awesome is that they're local, right? So they have local rules, they have local data, they have local enforcement, they have local oversight. Um, that's awesome about them, but it means that their scale is smaller than building software at a national level, which is necessary for a lot of things, right, if, if, that you want to achieve uh, when you're building software. So our job is to be the, the system that lives on top of all that, that local data that can create functionality that none of them could create on their own, right, that, you know, for example, when you're building a a machine learning model, right? You want to learn from as much data as possible all across the country. And then the people in St. Louis get to apply it to their specific St. Louis data that comes from their MLS. So this is like the best of both worlds. And that has been our, uh, you know, our reason for, for being for a while. And that is exactly what CoStar likes about us. If anything, they'll let us supercharge all that stuff, right? They're, they, have, they have things that we haven't been able to afford and haven't been able to do um, that can, that can, um, you know, leverage all that uh, national scale combined with local quality data. Like that's the combination that agents want and need. And that's what, what we do in partnership. We couldn't do what MLSs do, but they also can't do what we do. Yeah. Um, now you also mentioned both of you and your, as you were talking about that, because once we start talking about MLSs, we start talking about data. Um, and that's another concern I've heard expressed that this is some sort of like three dimensional chess play to get home snaps data to use for some other purpose. What do you say to people who have those kinds of concerns? John? Go ahead, Guy. Okay. I mean, the answer is that, um, I mean, that is not the case. You'll be surprised to, to, to hear the, the answer that that is not the case. Um, but more importantly, it's kind of the background as to why you should believe that that's not the case. Um, so, uh, you know, we have a long history of having data from lots of different players in the industry, all right? And we have, a, a, I think, a very uh, uh, you know, deep history of making sure that the right people see the right data and the wrong people don't see that data. So we have, you know, 250 MLSs. We have all of their agent only data. We don't accidentally show it to the other one, right? So we're not, we're not showing, you know, a, MLS A's data to, ML, to MLS B's uh, members. We're not showing anybody's private data to clients or consumers. And, and that is the history of our company. And similarly, CoStar has data from all kinds of different sources that they have to keep extremely private. I'll give you a couple of quick examples. So one is they have occupancy data from hotels through one of their more recent acquisitions. So they know every big hotel chain's occupancy information. Well, this is like the crown jewels of, uh, of uh, information on how well a hotel chain is doing. And um, they, uh, they have to make sure that they don't misuse that data. It doesn't get into the wrong hands. There's big SEC problems for them if they do that. Coaster is a publicly traded company. Um, there are plenty of other plenty of other examples of that. So um, they have built their reputation on uh, being fastidious about using data only for the purposes that it, it was intended for, and um, they have a lot to lose if they become known for having uh, either accidental or purposeful leaks or misuse of data that they are entrusted with. And so do we. So we take that extremely seriously. 
um, as individuals, as a company, and as part of our of our uh, new company. Yeah, I mean the the amount of data that they are trusted with across you know the biggest industries in the world today are I mean it, it, they take it so seriously. I have zero concern about that. And I just want to, I hate to be that guy in uh, that like brings up the contract, but I'm on the, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to, you know, from the BPP side of this, just to remind everybody, there is a JV agreement that restricts HomeSnap's ability to do things like that. HomeSnap can't use that data. And if CoStar were to appropriate the data and use it in a way that's not consistent with what HomeSnap's doing, that would also be a violation of the agreement. That would be, you know, it's a poison pill in the agreement. Like that's, that would, that would, that would eliminate home snap as the broker public portal and would rob it of all the value that CoStar is paying for it now. So not only is it inconsistent with the way CoStar does things, not only would it be kind of bad business practice, but it's actually, you can't do it by terms of the agreement with the BPP. And I want to, I keep throwing that in there just to make sure people understand that home snap is different from other types of, of tech partners in the real estate space because of the agreement um, with BPP. It just makes it different. Um, I, I will get, I have a, we have a bunch of questions. I promise I'm going to get to all the questions. If we don't get to them, um, we will answer them separately, but I think we'll be able to get to them. Um, I, I want, and I, and I, I want to start with, um, oh, I want to ask one last question before we get to the questions on the board is another thing people have brought up, particularly agents is the fact that CoStar is, is considered a premium product. I referenced before the fact that it's relatively expensive um as uh, it, as a as as products within the real estate space go and they see them they say oh does that mean now that home snap is going to follow the co-star model and become more expensive as well what would you say to people that are concerned about that i yeah i don't think that that's the case i think it could even go the other way i mean listen you ultimately agents are some of the smartest entrepreneurs around they are not they may overpay for something once but then they're going to be quite upset about it so you have to provide products that people are willing to pay for. I have friends in commercial, I've asked them, I'm like, do you think CoStar is expensive to market your building? And they're like, yeah, I do think it can be expensive, but I do it every time because it it, it, it works. And so um, residential is different. Agents aren't going to pay. I mean, HomeSnap, it's one of the things that I'm proud of. We, we really try to price our products in a way that agents will keep coming back and using us and have them work. And so I, I don't think you're gonna see that at all. If anything, we would like to make things even more cost-effective, not just for agents, but for the brokers and the MLSs too. And that's the exciting stuff that this scale and investment that we're gonna get from CoStar, I think is gonna to bring to the table. Also, people just have to realize they're completely different markets. There are far fewer commercial real estate brokers and per person, they do a lot more uh, business in dollar terms than, than residential brokers do. So the economics per person are just extremely different. So we're committed to having HomeSnap Pro continue as a product that agents don't pay for, that does more and more and more awesome stuff for them. Um, we're not planning to uh, try and, you know, th th that is not something we're going to be, uh, we're, we're going to be doing. If anything, we're looking for ways to give them more, um, not for ways to charge them more. All right, let me get to some of the, oh, I, I just wanted to add in that, you know, you, you guys brought up the fact that the commercial space is different. And I don't think people fully appreciate just how, you know, it's, it's just such a different model. I mean, the commercial brokers, they, they're, there's fewer of them. Uh, they tend to be, um, uh, everything tends to be more expensive on the commercial side. You know, they pay what the market, they, they charge, CoStar charges what the market will bear on the commercial side. Home snap charges with the market will bear on the residential right. side. Um, and you don't have some of the costs, as we said before, that CoStar had. All right, let me get to um, some of these questions. And um, uh, I'm going to get some of you later. The, um, uh, I got an open question. Deborah uh, Spedafora, uh, she's a, a commercial agent from Miami. And it's a, it's a, it's a pretty open-ended question. How does CoStar plan to make money? I'm assuming the implications. How do they plan to make money? How are you guys going to make money for them to justify this investment? So, I mean, we make money today by providing industry-friendly BPP and MLS-supported uh, solutions to make agents and teams and brokers more successful uh, in what they do. We do a lot around marketing. Um, we do uh, a lot around kind of workflows to allow you know, agent and broker time to be better spent. And I'm 100% uh, sure and in the know 
because I've had the discussions that we are now going to uh, see a lot more investment in that to be able to provide more both in HomeSnap Pro for free to agents, but also in terms of premium uh, solutions. And I would ask for everyone's respectfully, I'd ask for you know agent support in that. Like when you're purchasing HomeSnap products that are following you know industry supported practices and support the BPP, it actually helps our mission because you're right, CoStar is a business just like HomeSnap was a business. It does need to sustain itself. It does. It is. You know, does need to make money, but it it, it is committed to doing it in a way that has been the ethos of HomeSnap. Um, so you, you know, you're going to see a lot more uh, in terms of innovative technology and solutions, both free and premium, uh, to make agents more successful. Period. Today, HomeSnap really makes money in in two main ways from from the from agents uh which is one is we offer uh software most of it we offer for free but some of it is a is is premium software um and second so, so productivity tools things that let you do your job easier but things that agents have to choose to use they're not nope, they don't have to use them to do their job and then secondly uh, we offer marketing tools and services that let agents uh sell homes faster find their next listing uh make their clients happy um, do the, you know, make the, make the world go round, right. In terms of, in terms of the, the transactions that drive the industry, those are exactly the same ways that, uh, that we will be making money in, as part of CoStar, we will just have the resources to do, uh, to do them, you know, bigger, better, faster, stronger, as I said earlier. Um, but those same exact things will drive, like, there's not going to be some new magical way that we, that we make money that isn't, that isn't covered by those you know, by those, by those mechanisms. And that, that's why they bought us is because those are exactly how we already make money. We just don't make as much of it as they want us to in the future, right? Because we don't do those things as well as we could do them, you know, as well as we will do them two or three years from now. And uh, if we help agents, you know, sell their listings, probably on average, you know, about three, four, 5% of agents listing in a market, you know, use our service to run digital advertising campaigns, right? So right there, that is, uh, that's 97% or whatever it might be of agents that don't do that. Um, that's an, that is an, an opportunity. Um, you know, maybe they spend a little bit with us and spend a bunch in other ways. If we could do our job better um, and provide more value, maybe they'll choose to spend more money with ours. But it's the same principle and it's the same mechanism. Yep. All right. Speaking of how you make money, we have a question from, we have a couple of questions, but the question I want to get to right now um, uh, John Leonardi, uh, who uh, is up in Buffalo, um, he asked, you know, now that CoStar owns it, he says, well, I don't pay for, as an MLS, I don't pay other third-party websites to put my listings on the website. Will that change? Do you think that that model will change that MLSs pay a subscription fee so that HomeSnap Pro is available to all the agents? And we should say it's, it's the, you know, the, the members pay the MLS, the MLS pays the fee, um, so that HomeSnap Pro would be available to all the agents. Um, and um, uh, and HomeSnap would be available as an app for the consumers. Any possibility of that fee changing, John or Guy? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it is possible. And I think it's going to be a lot of, I mean, this really does take a village. I mean, you, you know, I'm talking to our uh, MLS partners every day. I'm talking to you all in the BPP. We need to, uh, as a VC-backed company, uh, we were so thankful for every dollar that an MLS would invest in HomeSnap Pro because we needed it, you know, to be able to run the business and pay our employees. That is that has changed now. And while CoStar is still a for-profit business, I think everything is open for discussion about what we can do there um, to to make it make it better. Our goal is is that we want uh, agents to use our 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 uh, technology because we believe in it and we think it makes them better. You know, I mean, if you go back to the the origins of the of the broker public portal initiative, I mean, Joe, you you mentioned that uh, it's the, the the consortium was formed, you know, seven years ago, and then we partnered four years ago. So there was a lot of stuff happening in three years, right, where they were trying to figure out what's what's possible. You know, the the idea was that uh, MLSs and MLS dues were kind of the funding source that could make this idea work, right? And I think you know. Probably in hindsight, it was a little optimistic to think that that alone could could support a portal that could compete with the big guys. 
Um, we came in and tried to, by the fact that we already had something that existed, right, like make it more affordable and drive the cost down to MLSs as low as we possibly could. Um, but, uh, you know, even now we understand that a dollar a month is a burden for MLSs. And, you know, this is a possibility of having a new funding source that isn't just MLSs that can make our brand, our consumer portal and the traffic and everything else, uh, you know, grow potentially exponentially. And, you know, it's up to, uh, up to us in collaboration with the, the industry via the BPP to figure out how to make that work. But that is now possible in a way that wasn't yesterday, frankly. Yeah. Um, another question, uh, Edward Chavkin, forgive me on the pronunciation, Edward, um, the, um, asked about third party advertisements on home snap. And I want to make sure that gets out because we've referenced it, but let's just talk explicitly about third party advertising. If, if he's talking about, let's just separate out. If he's talking about display advertising, advertising right, right. a competing broker on a listing that can happen, right? That's the deal with the, that's the BPP deal that, and that's really, that's the, like the cornerstone bedrock thing um is there a possibility other types of advertising might get done on, on home snap that didn't that didn't relate to competing advertising on listing display i think yeah absolutely anything's possible but it's going to be decided with the bpp i mean that's the way our agreement is and um i i know that you know what matters is today everything we do in the bpp there's all the leads go for free to the agents and brokers um and we'd love to you know have CoStar put the hundreds of millions of dollars into the into the uh, consumer side of this. And, and we're gonna have to discuss how that'll be done. But what I know is if there ever was any advertising that the BPP agreed to and MLSs were comfortable with, it would follow fair display and it would be your listing your lead and all those. We're not changing our model. We're just mm -hmm. not, it, it, we're just, just not doing it. Just to be clear, so again, there's things we're not allowed to do, right? And that includes, like, we can't we can't advertise other agents on your listings. We can't advertise, you know, other people's like mortgage companies on your listings. And and so there's all kinds of things we can't we can't do. But even, you know, nobody wants to have a, like a, a site coded in ads. It's not a very good business model, to be perfectly honest with you. It's the reason that most kind of ad ad driven um, uh, sites are, are having a tough time right now. It's like, it's not a great business model. So that's not a good idea. Like even if we were like allowed to do it, um, it's not something we want to do. It's not a good way to make money. We want to do things that facilitate business for our agents and brokers. I mean, CoStar has got a pretty sharp elbowed reputation in the commercial space. I mean, they are a, um, uh, they're the hard negotiators. They are, uh, they are, you know, they're, they're, they're well respected and sometimes some would say feared as well. Um, and I guess there's some concern that, that, you know, are they are they are they going to take that approach in residential? Are they going to is that culture going to change uh, home snaps culture? And I don't mean any disrespect to CoStar, but you know they're they they have this tough reputation. You guys don't have that tough reputation. Will they change you in that way? Do you think? Well, you know, I think I can just give you my personal you know observations of of of, of working with them. I find it so interesting because um, as passionate and concerned as we are about data on the residential side, uh, which is well-founded. What I see, cause I've, uh, you know, I've heard these things too, and I've read articles. Um, they have invested billions uh, in, you know, go, they, they have hundreds and I think it's thousands now of researchers that go out and take pictures of buildings and do all this stuff. And then they have experienced people that take their data without permission. And, and they are very serious about that. Um, they don't want that to happen. And so what I find is that they have a real appreciation for the fact that you do not do things with other people's data that you're not supposed to do, period, end of story. And I think sometimes in the, I think, you know, the press likes to sensationalize. I know I, I kind of feel it with what's happened with us, you know, like, oh, it must be something bad that they're going to do. But um, they, they are very tough about that. They do, they, they take that very seriously. And I think they then very much appreciate what home snaps responsibilities are. And again, it's the last company that you want to buy if uh, if you aren't going to follow what home snaps model is. But I mean, I think it's a it's you, you want some of each, right? Like you want people who are looking out for uh, for the players in the industry who have a point of view that that respects what they do. Um, you know, CoStar would point out like 
they've in all these years, they've never become a broker on the commercial side, right? They certainly could have. Uh, they didn't. They've never uh, been involved in the transactions, buying, you know, doing I buying or, or leasing or becoming a middleman. Never done any of those things, despite predictions that they would have done that by, you know, different people in that space. Um, so to some extent, they've stayed in their lane, right? As as they said they would. Um, you know, in terms of uh, most of their, you know, of the behavior that you're talking about is either in service of protecting their intellectual property, which frankly MLSs should like appreciate yeah. because that's what they're trying to do. That's what the, that's one of the things they're worried about is protecting their own intellectual property. So I think CoStar is actually sympathetic to that because they, you know, they're, they're in your position in, in the case of a lot of their commercial data. And secondly was with regard to, you know, competitors, right? Some of whom were taking their data and using it. Um, and especially as we try to grow the consumer brand, like we're going to have to try to play to win a little bit here. Um, yep. And, and maybe that we, maybe we need a little bit more of that, especially on that side of the business. We're not trying to win against agents or brokers or MLSs. We're, we're trying to win consumers. We're trying to win, you know, um, in, in that, in that sphere. And like, I think some of that attitude could really help us to be perfectly honest. Um, all right. I have one last question. Then I want to turn to sort of looking big picture in the future. Um, last question comes from uh, Dan Sale um, uh, from St. Louis. Uh, he quotes you, John, as saying, HomeSnap isn't just trying to be a search portal and compete with Zillow in that space. Rather, HomeSnap is trying to be the operating system for agents to provide the right information to clients at the right time. He says, that sounds like what MLSs do. Clar <laughs> clarify that. Well, thank you, Dan, for quoting me. Uh, no, what I mean is if you look at the front end, so the MLS is, we're not an MLS. We're not trying to be an MLS. That's why we're in partnership with MLSs. But our, one of the great things about our partnership with MLSs is together, we're allowed to provide tools, in this case, HomeSnap Pro, um, that allows agents to be um, you know, effective anywhere. And in the case of HomeSnap Pro on your phone, uh, wherever they go. And so um, we're really committed to that. We are committed to building incredible tools that make agents more successful every day and doing their jobs. And I'll tell you, and I think a lot of folks out there, uh, because I know a, a lot of agents uh, also, you know, are involved in tech companies on the side and a lot of tech companies out there. The hardest thing is having enough resources. And for HomeSnap every year, it's like, oh my God, we could build this. We could build this for them. We could do this. We could do this with the MLS. And then, okay, we can only pick two of them. And that sucks. It sucks. And I am so happy. Now it's not going to be that way. Um, and, and we hope our MLS partners are going to be excited about it. We're going to be, and I, we hope agents are going to be more excited about it. We're going to get to do a lot more and continue to build that. But um, that in no way means, I mean, it means what it means. That's what we've been doing for over a decade, building great tools for agents. Yeah. And that's, and that actually leads right into kind of, we have a couple of final questions that I wanted to say, because I wanted to spend this last 15 minutes talking about kind of the view of the future, the, what could home snap become? So we've got uh, Brian Alford asks, uh, what does this mean for home snap? And then Edward asked about the software innovations that you plan now uh, and specifically references, safe searches, uh, the broker, safe searches, things like that. I guess there's more question for guy on the tech side. What's uh, what's in the hopper that you think now might become uh, realizable or might move more quickly to get done um, that people, you know, that you think might be possible now with the resources that you think you're going to be able to have? Yeah, so I mean, I think a lot of the a lot of the, the the challenges of the last few years are about, you know, prioritization and picking, you know, picking which of your children you're going to you're going to feed on a given day, which is no fun. Right. So it's, uh, you know, not having to do that means we can do multiple things simultaneously, right? Like, so that'll take a little bit of time to ramp up with it, like literally hire people. Um, it isn't like you can just, you know, put, put money in and get software out. You have to hire people and, and build the team and, and, and so forth. So, you know, the safe search component from a, like, it's actually an extremely complicated thing to, to pull off, to have a consumer search an agent search and then have the interface between the two um, that works at the level of speed and quality that we'd like to uh, have our products work at. Um, and so we've had to build that up over time. So that's a perfect example of something that we could do uh, faster. That's already coming. So, so we, we launched the new version of our safe search for, you know, for one person at a time and the agent version, including setting them up on behalf of and getting feedback for, for, from your clients is coming 
um, probably in Q1. So, uh, you know, the next few months. Um, per but perfect example of uh, the kind of thing that we we can that we can uh, you know double down on. We're going to be doing a lot more work on integrations with other with other partners. Um, we're going to be bringing a lot of more third-party data sets in that we can integrate in and that can serve both the professional audience and the, the, the portal, the consumer and client audience. So um, I think, you know, the world is our oyster there and it's very exciting to have. And that's, none of that is even talking about the fact that CoStar has a lot of ingredients inside their company between the, their commercial products, apartments.com, uh, that we can bring into our products more quickly without having to build everything from scratch which is exciting. So they either have existing technology or at least the people who built it who can help coach us up a little bit on how to do something that before we might've had to go learn uh, from, from the ground up. Yep. John? Uh, I think everything, that's right. I mean, I can tell you the one thing that I know is, is, is passionate to us and we've been working on for so many years and is that agents, it is even with what's happened this year, it's just even more grist for the mill that agents have to own their online presence and they have to be in control of you know who they are in the digital world as well as in the offline world and uh, you know i'm very proud of the work that we've done there and the success that agents have had and i think that that's going to continue and that's one of the things that i loved about uh costar that you know the name costar means we're, we're not we're the costar it's, 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 it's not about us. It's about them. And I remember that in my first meeting with them and um, it's, it, it's how they think. And we just want to make agents great. And I think a lot of our products do that. I think that there are times if we're honest, that our products need to get better and we haven't had the resources that we needed to, to get that done. And now we don't have any excuses. So I'm sure everybody's going to hold us to task. <laughs> Basically, whatever it is you don't like, that's what we're working on next. Yeah, that's what we're working on. <laughs> Your particular idiosyncratic uh, things yeah. that you don't like, that's exactly that's the, top of the, that's list. At the top of our list. You know, I would just tell you generally, I mean, one of the reasons I got involved uh, with HomeSnap, um, and I started, what, four months ago now uh, with the BPP, is about a year and a half ago, I was doing a lot of speaking around the country, talking to MLS organizations, associations, and I had a little niche about disruption in real estate because I'd written a book about it. So I was getting a lot of opportunities to speak. And every time I spoke about it, I had brokers come up to me afterwards and be like, this is so, I've never seen it this stressful, this challenging, you know, we've got people competing with us. who have got unlimited war chests. We've got people competing with us with technology that we couldn't possibly build or buy. Um, you know, what, are, how are we going to compete? And, it was right after that that I started to take a look at HomeSnap and I, and I really saw the potential in HomeSnap because of how it's positioned as the broker public portal to be the answer to a lot of that. There's a lot of technology that you guys have and people talk about, well, the, you know, um, that technology is essentially free to agents. They pay it as part of their subscription fees to MLSs, but all of um, uh, HomeSnap Pro is free to agents. The HomeSnap app and the integration with that is all free to agents and it's obviously free to consumers. But there's also a bunch of technology and tools that you've built that and you will continue apparently to build that allow brokers and agents to compete in a way that they might not have been able to compete before. And I just feel like a lot of the people they've been they've been looking for exactly this in the industry. They've been looking for someone who would who would back them. And you guys are doing that. And that's what I think is so powerful about, you know, with CoStar coming in um, and giving you the resources to really be able to compete on that level. Um, you know, that's what the opportunity is, right? Totally. And I mean, in, in, in complete candor, the MLS deserve a lot of credit too, because, you know, the products we're most proud of, they wouldn't have been able to be made if it wasn't for the MLSs uh, supporting it. And also they're thought partners with us. So I'm pumped. And, you know, we've done some uh, really cool things around digital marketing. We've done uh, things around workflows that we're very proud of. And I think we're going to get a lot more resources, but we're also going to have a lot more responsibility to the industry, to our partners, to agents. And I'm excited for it. I think it's, it's, we're, we're playing to play big and uh, we want people to hold us to, uh, to a, a high level. Um, and so, and we're thrilled to have you, Joe, as part of this too. It's, it's great. Let's kick butt. <laughs> uh, the, what do you, what do you see? Let's, let's wave a magic wand five years from now. What do you see? What's the, what's the, what's the goal? What's the dream where home snap is five years from now? Jeff Goldblum doing the, the Super Bowl commercials with 
No, I mean, listen, we want, the, the, I, I guess for me, I'll sp I'm speak personally. I, I believe that non-disruptive innovation is the way to go in this industry. Um, agents are the cornerstone of this industry. We have seen models where, uh, and listen, we used to go raise money here. Investors like, oh, you know, aren't agents going to go away? I mean, it's, it's BS. It's BS. And there have been a group of, uh, there's incredible companies even beyond us that really believe in the power of the agent, the power of the brokerage and working with the industry. And I would like this to be a massive success. I'd love to see homesnap.com and, and the broker public portal as, you know, the place where people go to find information as consumers to uh, about homes. And I'd love to see, you know, agents saying, great job, you guys, you did it. You didn't give up. You didn't, you, you know, do it the wrong way. You did it the right way and it worked. And um, we can use, you know, your app to work with our clients and do amazing things. And just people are happy. And that, that is the best business. That's how you build a great business. Joe, you, 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 know, you, you kind of touched on something that gets to how for, for a while we've tried to think about ourselves. And, and I think it's the way that CoStar thinks about us as well, which is, um, I look at it like we're trying to use all of the scaled technology tools of disruption, right, to actually support the industry, right? And so it's taking all the tools that people use to create a newfangled brokerage that competes with you and has, you know, uh, this, you know, uh, differentiated set of technology tools or somebody that wants to create a, you know, a technology driven marketplace where people can transact business directly with each other or, you know, name your disruptive, whether you're trying to disrupt the, the brokerage model or the, 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 you know, the cooperation uh, model or whatever it might be. Right. And they have investment in technology. We try and do all those things and then make the tools available to everybody on an equal basis. Right. And so one of the genius rules of the broker public portal, right. And, and therefore us is, we can't make products that are exclusive. We can't say to a broker or an agent, hey, only three slots left in this zip code for this magical product of whatever <laughs> kind it is, right? And like, that's the cornerstone of how so many companies in this industry have made money is by creating kind of fake exclusivity, right? Where they're gonna sell to the first three people and then not the fourth one, right? We don't do that, can't do that, we'll never do that, right? The whole idea is we make stuff that's accessible to everybody. It's your first day on the job as an agent, we're there to help you uh, get a listing, find a new client, you know, with our marketing solutions to help you uh, manage your listing, to help you connect with other agents and find out about them and who they are, um, to help you uh, connect with your clients and see what they're doing and, and, and everything. And we're not going to box you out because it's your first day on the job. Um, and I think that philosophy is really important. And frankly, it is the philosophy of an MLS. That's their job is to support everyone equally and create a, a playing field that lets everybody have an opportunity. Doesn't mean everybody's gonna be equally successful, but they have an equal opportunity. Like that is our philosophy too. And so whatever we look like five years from now, it's gonna be built on that same philosophy where we're trying to help everyone, give everyone an equal chance. We're not gonna you know, let people uh, buy up zip codes and put their names on other people. Like none of that stuff. Like that's not the philosophy of the company. It's not my personal philosophy. It doesn't, that's not what I wanna do. And it's not what CoStar wants to do. And, you know, okay, John. Yeah, I was going to just tell you, it was, when Guy was speaking, it made me think. Um, I had someone ask me, it was a broker about a year ago, ask me uh, one night over drinks. He's like, don't you guys, you must hate how much scrutiny, like everything that HomeSnap does, you have to be so transparent and, uh, you know, you got to get all these approvals and all this kind of, must be crazy, you know, like other tech companies don't have to, and it's, it's so funny because guys always said this to me and he's right. It's one of our biggest competitive advantages because the fact is HomeSnap, we're held to a higher standard. We have all this transparency built into all of our contracts, but the outcome is we have to build really good stuff or it doesn't fly. And so I welcome, and I think CoStar knows that too and what they were buying. So um, it, it, I, I'm excited for what's going to come next. And I think in terms of what's possible, it's going to continue to be this joint effort with the industry um, or, or shame on us. It should be. Uh, and we can do something really magical. You know, it's funny. The, you know, you say that and, and you're right. I mean, HomeSnap has an advantage because of the relationship with the broker public portal, because that comes with, you know, an industry endorsement 
as well as um, it, it maybe to some extent it, it compels you to be more creative because you can't fall back on an easy trick of, of putting the, you know, 15 celebrities, what they look like today. You can't do crap like that to make cheap money. You have to like make money honestly, which you did. And now it's paid off with this acquisition. And now it's hopefully going to keep paying off now with the, with the, with the deal with as, as co-star gets involved. Um, the thing I want to say from the BPP and we'll, I'll close with this, let you have a final word is that the people who say, Oh, what does this mean? What does this mean? From the BPP perspective, from seven years ago when this was founded, this is exactly what we wanted to happen. We didn't want to form the broker public portal and have it be, you know, and and lightly funded or mid-range funded. We wanted to partner with somebody who was going to build something that could be a dominant player, a big player in search in real estate. And this is exactly and that that this is how it happens: is that you were venture back business, you've now got acquired by a not just a random, you know, company, you've gotten acquired by somebody who's got experience doing exactly what you're doing in a different realm, in the commercial realm. Um, so, you know, the people that are like, listen, relax, chill, keep an eye on it, watch what happens. If something bad happens, right. then yeah. react, but don't anticipate the bad thing happen. Anticipate the good things. And I'll let you leave with one minute left. What's the good thing? Give me the, give me the good word. What's the, uh, what, what should people be excited about? looking forward to home snap well i mean for me i'm excited about having the resources to make the, the the best possible software for agents and brokers and mls's and combine it with a, a kick-ass consumer brand that your 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 mom and her friends have heard about not just you know not just not just Insiders, your, your like friend that. right and i think that is possible in a way that it wasn't possible before um and importantly how we get from here to there isn't just something that we will make up and dictate to you and tell you how it's how it's going to be it's something that we will work on together with the industry in general and with the bpp and the board of the bpp in particular uh, to make sure that it uh lives up to not just the letter of the law but the values that and the spirit of the law that that that, that created that the written law um that, that got us here right so the same principles that got us here will guide the next chapter but the possibilities have now gotten substantially bigger in terms of realizing the original vision of what we're doing here together. John, anything you want to add? My, my dream would be that 15 years from now, someone would say in a business school class, like home snap and the broker public portal proved that the way to build a great business model in residential is working with the industry. I remember, uh, you know, people used to say to Steve case all the time, like, what because he believed too and everyone you know the way to build a great business in residential real estate is working with the industry and 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 i kind of there's all these skeptics and da 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 and i guess he was proven right there and i want this one to be proven right too because everyone's going to say can you really build um a really successful consumer search experience and a really successful set of tools for agents supporting the industry and working with your partners watch this space all right. Well, let's watch that space. Thank you, John. Thank you, Guy. Thank, Thank you, you guys. all of you for joining us. Uh, we really do appreciate it. If you have any further questions or follow-up, or you want to find out more, reach out to me, Joe Rand, Joe at JoeRand.com, uh, and I'll hook you up uh, with someone at home snap, the right person to talk to. Otherwise, thank you all for attending. Uh, please have a wonderful holiday. Uh, be, oh, I got my hat. Have a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful new year and the whole thing, and we'll see you all. Have a, have a great uh, holiday, and we'll see you all in the new year. Congratulations. Happy holidays. John. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Thanks, everybody. Thank Happy holidays. Stay safe.